things should be preached in his name among how many people? All nations beginning at Jerusalem. That's what he has commanded and that's what we're going to do. Are you going to do it? John chapter 1 verse 29. John chapter 1 verse 29. You want to tell the people because they don't know that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God and he sacrificed already and he has given his life already for the salvation of the whole world. It says in John chapter 1 verse 29, it says the next day John said Jesus coming unto him. He said, behold the Lamb of God. He pointed out Christ. He pointed out the Savior. He pointed out the Redeemer. You will do the same thing. Everybody that comes your way, everybody that you even go to, if they don't come to you, you tell them, Behold the Lamb of God. We take the sin of the world away. And as they believe, the Lord will save them. The Lord will change their lives. That's the reason he has saved you, so that you can become a source of salvation to other people. We're coming to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 26. Unto you first, God, having raised up Jesus, his son, sent him. That's why Jesus was sent, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. He said, as my father has sent me, what did he send him to do? He sent him to turn people away from their iniquity. And he says, as my father has sent me, even so have I sent you. What are you to do? Then you turn people away from their iniquity, from their sin, and you turn them to the Savior, and they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they will have salvation. They will have eternal life. And as they're going to heaven, they will follow you to heaven in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. I'm reading from verse 16. Acts, chapter 26, verse 16. But rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. Have you heard the word of the Lord today? Has the Lord appeared to you? Do you sense the presence of God with you there? Have you got something you didn't get have before? Do you have the gospel? I said, do you have the gospel? Do you have the revelation of his will? And then you can say, I met the Lord. I saw the Lord. I heard from the Lord. I received the word of the Lord. It says, for this purpose have I appeared unto thee to make thee a minister. Somebody there a minister and a witness somebody there a witness both of these things which thou art seen and of the things in the which i will appear unto thee delivering thee from the people he will deliver you he'll protect you and as you go preaching the word and as you go doing the work of god this word will reach out to many people through you in jesus name and it says from the gentiles unto whom i now tell me I now tell me out aloud, and I'll send thee, is sending you to the people, send you to a community, and send you to the sinners, call them to repentance, call them to salvation, call them to regeneration. And as he sent you, you are going to be faithful, and many people are going to come to the Lord in Jesus' name. Look at verse 18, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness unto light. As you go to them, you'll open their eyes to see. They'll see that Jesus is Savior. They'll see that Jesus is Lord. They will see that they are to turn from their sin, turn to the Savior, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. There'll be genuine salvation. There'll be real salvation, a real transformation of their lives. It says to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. Amen? Amen. That they may receive, what are they going to receive? forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me it will happen in jesus name 
You see, the early church had the same thing you are hearing now. What did they do? They did what the Lord wanted them to do because Jesus said, As the Father has sent me, even so send I you. Come to chapter 8 of Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 4. Acts chapter 8, verse 4, and, and it says, And uh, therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere. What are they doing? They went to the communities preaching the word, and they went to all the streets preaching the word, and they know that every door preaching the word, you know, it's wonderful to come together to the Bible study, but then as we finish the Bible study that was scattered everywhere, they went out everywhere, and they were preaching the word. This community will hear the word. This local government will hear the word. All this area will hear the word. And all the people who are hearing today, your communities, your region, and your state, every locality, every village, every city, every town, they will hear the word of God in Jesus' name. You see, we're not to hide ourselves inside the sanctuary, inside the temple, inside the church building. We're to go out and tell the people where they are. Look at chapter 8, chapter 8 of Acts. I'm reading here from verse 26. Acts chapter 8, and we're reading from verse 26 and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip saying arise and go toward the south unto the way that goes down from Jerusalem unto Gaza which is a desert and he arose immediately he didn't waste time he didn't say well I still have this to do I still have that to do and he arose and he went you will arise and you will go I said you arise and you go and you take the gospel with you, you take the goodness with you and you take the message of life eternal with you and people are going to hear they're going to repent in Jesus name and he arose and went and behold a man of Ethiopia a eunuch of great authority under Candace Koina of the Ethiopians who had the charge of all our treasure uh, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship and was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet and then the spirit said unto Philip go near that's what the spirit is telling you as you see the sinners as you see the unbelievers as you see the people that have not got the gospel go near and join thyself to this chariot and Philip Brand silver to him and had him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come to him and sit with him. Look at verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him and preached unto him you will preach Jesus the man was born again they will be born again look at chapter 11 Acts chapter 11 I'm reading from verse 19 Acts chapter 11 verse 19 now they which was scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and until preaching the word to none but to the Jews only and then it says in verse 21 and the hand of the Lord was with them and a great number believed and turned to the Lord will you do it I said will you do it and this work will prosper in your hand let's come back to John chapter 17 John chapter 17 I'm reading from verse 18 as thou hast sent me into the world even so have I also sent them into the world you're ready to carry the gospel ready to take the gospel and then tonight you are going to rise up you are going to pray that the Lord will empower you the Lord will energize you everything we have heard the Lord will translate everything to your personal experience tonight we have heard that Jesus knew why he was here do you know why you are in the world Jesus knew what he was to do in the world do you know what you are to do in the world Jesus knew how to do it and he followed the best methods open your mouth and say Lord I got something today that thing you've got today take 
it back to the Lord and say, Lord, I will. Lord, I will. Lord, I will. I will follow your word. I'll follow your truth. I'll follow the teaching. I'm going to make it practical in my life. I tell the Lord, Jesus Christ was a person of purpose. Be a man of purpose. Be a woman of purpose. That you tell the Lord, oh Lord, here I am today. I'm going to serve you. Here I am today. I'm going to follow after the word I have heard so that your joy will be full. And the people you are ministering to, you want their joy to be full. The people you are touching their lives and you are telling them, here is the way walking therein, and you are revealing the Savior to them. You want their joy to be full. If they don't get saved, their joy is not going to be full. They are going to have salvation. They are going to have redemption. They are going to have forgiveness. Tell them, tell them, so that their joy will be full. And you yourself, you will have your joy full when you are serving the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And when you are transparent in your service to the Lord, and you are committed in your service unto the Lord, tell the Lord, I want that same joy Jesus Christ was looking at that goal. And he was looking at the joy that was set before him. And because of that, he endured the cross. You'll endure whatever challenge, you'll endure whatever difficulty, you'll endure whatever persecution, you'll endure whatever misunderstanding, you will endure whatever challenge it is so that you focus on the joy that is set before you. Just like the Lord Jesus Christ, let the light of Christ shine through you. Let the word of God come forth through you. Let the experience of salvation be real in your personal life and make sure that by the grace of God in the strength of the Lord, by the teaching of the word of God and by the influence and the power of the Holy Ghost in your life, make sure that that separation from the world is already accomplished that you are not of the world even as Christ is not of the world not of the world not of the world you are not part of their pollution you are not part of their defilement you are not part of uh, their evil you are not part of their darkness you are not part of their waywardness you are not part of their fraud you are not part of the things of the world they are not of the world even as i am not of the world brother let the lord be able to testify concerning you sister let the lord be able to testify concerning you he's not of the world she's not of the world she's born again she's a child of god his life is clean her life is clean everything about him about her i see her i see through her heart i see through her life i see through her behavior is not of the world as i'm not of the world she is not of the world as i am not of the world you tell the lord if you're really born again if anyone be in christ a new creature old things have passed away and behold all things have become new all things become new not part of the world true believers separated from the world true believers distinct from the world remember the words of jesus love not the world none of the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for the things that are in the world the pride of life the loss of the flesh the loss of the eyes they're not of the father they're of the world and the world passeth away only he, only she that does the will of God abideth forever. Don't go back to your vomit. Don't go back to the defilement of the world. Don't be entangled again with the pollutions of the world. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and I will receive you. Make up your mind now. Make up your mind. Take a decision and say, Lord, I'm going to serve you in righteousness and holiness. All the things of the world I abandon. All the things of the world I throw away. I'm going to live clean and live right and live pure and live bright for the Lord. I will be different. As light is different from the darkness of the world, I'm going to be different from the world. As salt is different from pepper, I'm going to be different. Different from the world. Be not part of the world. Be transformed and let that life be preserved. The life that is different from that of the world. Real preservation. Preservation. Preservation in the things of the Lord. It says, he that is born of God does not commit sin. And he that is born of God keepeth himself. And that wicked one toucheth him not. That wicked one toucheth him not. Let your salvation be clear and definite. 
clear and definite that anywhere you are, in the church, at home, on the street, in the bus, in a taxi, in the place of work, that distinction, that clarity of salvation will be so clear to everyone. And after salvation, there's sanctification. Sanctification. And Jesus prayed for your sanctification. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. He prayed for sanctification. And I pray God that God himself will sanctify you, spirit, soul, and body. That he'll preserve you blameless unto the coming of the Lord. What a great experience. You have purity through that sanctification. Tell him to purify your heart. Purify your soul, purify your spirit, purify your tongue, purify your mind, purify your memory, purify every part of you, internal purity. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in a holy place? They that have clean hands, salvation, and a pure heart, sanctification. It's made provision for that. Jesus has made provision for your sanctification. And so you tell the Lord, I know you made provision for that. He gave his blood, he shed his blood, so he will cleanse you, so he'll purge you, so he'll purify you. He's still praying for you, interceding for you. It will be done. He sanctifies, he purifies. The purpose is that the body of sin will be destroyed. The purpose of that sanctification is that you'll be pure within and without holy through and through holy in the secret holy in the public transparently holy continually holy purified tell the lord he will do it the price is paid already the blood of jesus jesus himself that he might sanctify the people, shed his blood, and suffered without the gate, outside the gate. Let's follow after. Consecrate yourself. Lay everything on the altar. Abandon everything that he does. Your total submission to the Lord. Prepare yourself. Cleanse yourself. Abstain from every appearance of evil. And say, Lord, here am I. I'm available, sanctify me, purify me. He will, he will. And then after that sanctification, preservation is sanctification. That he preserves you, preserves you. That you are not getting it and losing it, picking it up and dropping it. That everywhere you find yourself, that the grace of God will cover your life. And you'll be preserved in sanctification. At home, sanctification. At work, sanctification. In school, sanctification. On the street, sanctification. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And he saves us for a purpose. He sanctifies us for a purpose. His service participation in his work as thou hast sent me into the world he was saying to bring sinners into the kingdom he was saying to bring repentance unto people and the people that repented they were saved their lives were turned around And that redemption was visible to be seen. The same thing with the people the Lord is sending you to. As my Father has sent me into the world, even so send I you into the world that you'll seek to save the people that are lost. Commit your time. Commit your strength. Commit your energy. Commit everything you've got into the salvation of souls. Reach out. You've got salvation? Tell other people. You've got this truth? Tell other people. 
and let people know you belong to the Lord. Let people know that you enjoy the service of the Lord and you're inviting them to also come and serve the Lord. Called to salvation, was saved. Called to sanctification, was sanctified. Called to service, was serve the Lord. Do his work and keep on doing it until you finish well. Keep on doing the work until you finish well. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, and revive people said, and those who are going to serve the Lord, those who are going to follow the Lord, those who are going to do the will of God, those who are going to serve as Christ has served, and those who accept the challenge as my Father has sent me, even so send I you, and those people said, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for our study tonight. What sacred moment we have with you in your presence. And you have revealed your mind unto us. We pray, Lord, this will not be in vain upon anyone here tonight. In Jesus' name. Lord, we're praying your joy will come to every heart. Come to every family. And Lord, as we go out, depression will vanish away. Sadness will vanish away gladness and joy and rejoicing will come in every heart in Jesus name. Anything that will bring sorrow, anything that will bring heartache, anything that will bring pain, anything that will be in depression oh Lord I pray wipe every sinner from your people in Jesus name. Joy in every heart, joy in every home, joy in their business, joy in their family, joy everywhere in Jesus name and the joy will never end. Fulfill their joy, increase their joy. And I pray, Lord, that as you have said, we're not of the world, even as Christ is not of the world, any sin of the world that tries to attach itself unto us, oh Lord, we pray, wash them away in Jesus' name. The character of the world, the attitude of the world, the drinking of the world, the smoking of the world, the occultism of the world, and the worldliness and the games of the world, everything you take away from everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, help us to be a good representation, representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. That you'll be a little Christ there, a little Christ there, and as we are walking, as we are moving, people will say, you had been with Jesus. She had been with Jesus. And Lord, we pray, the very character of Christ, and the very nature of Christ, and the attitude of Christ, and the holiness, righteousness of Christ, will be upon everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, there will be no graceless person here. The grace of God, the gift of God, the power of God, the anointing of the Spirit, the enveloping of the Spirit will be upon everyone in Jesus' name. And this sanctification, sanctify them throughout thy truth. Thy word is truth. Lord, I pray this great work will be done in every heart in Jesus' name. For the brother there, for the sister there, for the father in the Lord, mother in the Lord, everyone there. Do it for every one of us in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, that people will see that purity is in our life. Sanctification in our lives. Holiness in our lives. And it will be holiness that is visible and, and very known, well known to all people around us in Jesus' name. In our heart, holiness. In our spirit, holiness. In our temper, holiness. In our emotion, holiness. In our character, holiness. In our interaction, holiness. In our relationship, holiness. Morning, afternoon, and evening, holiness unto the Lord in Jesus' name. And Lord, you've given us a work to do. We're going to do it. You have said, as the Father sent me, even so have I sent you. Lord, we accept that work. We'll do it with passion and compassion. And as we reach out and touch other people's lives, I pray that the people will touch, they'll never be the same again. Give them real salvation, real regeneration, and a turning around transformation in their lives in Jesus' name. We will have testimony. The work will prosper in our hand. Lord, bless everyone. 
enrich everyone's life and every other blessing we need you know that we need before your people go impart upon everyone one by one in jesus name strengthen the weak encourage those who are discouraged and i pray that all the problems they brought here today they drop everything behind and they move forward in the strength of the lord the lord bless you the lord bless your family the lord bless your going out the lord bless your coming in and the lord increase and fulfill his joy in your life you go from strength to strength from faith to faith from power to power and what the lord has done will be permanent in your life in jesus name lord we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray